We have covered the S and P orbitals. First, 1s, hydrogen and helium, a spherical shaped electron cloud. Then, 2s, with lithium and beryllium, a slightly larger spherical cloud. Boron through neon, three dumbbell shaped clouds at right angles to each other we called 2px, 2py, and 2pz. For the third shell, we showed the same S and P orbitals. 3s, sodium and magnesium, and then 3px, 3py, and 3pz for aluminum through argon. Now, welcome to our sixth chemistry video describing how electrons fill orbitals and the shapes of those orbitals. First, we'll take a quick look at the 4s orbital, and then we'll introduce the new d, or diffuse, orbitals. Following along, as we build up the electron cloud, potassium and calcium are in the fourth row, the principal energy level n equals 4, and the first two groups, the angular momentum l equals 0. And so we have an s, or spherical shaped orbital, 4s will just be larger than 3s. Okay, before we go on to the d orbitals. The first thing to note in these d orbitals are they are actually in principal energy level n equals 3. We will cover this little hiccup in the order of filling shells in a different video. But for now, remember this shift of filling the next level s orbital before filling the d orbitals continues for each of the remaining rows. But what do d orbitals look like? Remember the angular momentum number l determines the shape of the orbital. L equals 0 is spherical, so we used Sharpe's S for spherical. L equals 1 was dumbbell shaped, so we used the principles P for polar. But unlike the P orbitals, when the angular momentum L equals 2, we see that some of the D orbitals will have different shapes. And while most are a clover leaf or daisy looking pattern, the first one we'll look at for scandium is the D orbital when the magnetic quantum number M equals 0. By convention, we call this 3DZ squared. The shape is a bit hard to see with our wave model, and so we can wrap the outside with lines and better show the shape. From the side, we can see a stretched or elongated polar shape similar to 2p, but this orbital also has a donut or a torus around the middle. Before we continue on with titanium, let's first quickly look through the other 5d orbitals. We started with the magnetic quantum number 0, and we have this elongated dumbbell with a donut. As we shift the magnetic quantum number m equals 1, we see a cloverleaf pattern. And for m equals 1, the petals are aligned in the xz plane. So this is labeled 3d xz. When we shift to a magnetic quantum number m minus 1, we see the same cloverleaf pattern. And for m equals minus 1, the petals are aligned in the yz plane. So this we label 3d yz. Here are the two shown together m equals 1 is the 3d xz, yellow colored, and m equals minus 1 is 3d yz, the cyan colored. Now with angular momentum l equals 2, m can be plus or minus 2, so we shift the magnetic quantum number to m plus 2. Again, we see a clover leaf or a daisy pattern. This time the petals or lobes are in the xy plane and aligned with the x and y axes. M Positive 2 is labeled as 3d x squared minus y squared. And for m equals negative 2, the pattern stays the same. It's just for m equals minus 2, the orbitals rotate 45 degrees in the xy plane. Now the petals or lobes are in between the x and y axes. And this is labeled 3d xy. Here we show the two orbitals with magnetic quantum number m equals plus or minus 2 m equals 2 was 3d x squared minus y squared, colored green. And m equals minus 2 is 3d x y, colored red. And if we were to show all five of the d orbitals combined, it would look something similar to this. Of course, with some adjustments to side for the artistic beauty of chemistry. So, for l equals 2, a cloverleaf or a daisy pattern, we can use the diffuse D for daisy. Although for M equals zero, we do see the dumbbell with a donut shape. So keep in mind the D can be dumbbell donut as well. So let's move on and show one way the electrons can fill 3D orbitals. The second element in the fourth row in 3D is titanium. This electron will not go into an already occupied orbital, in this case our 3DZZ orbital, Remember Hund's rule? All of the subshell orbitals will each have one electron with similar spin before a second electron with opposite spin goes into an orbital. So, let's put this similar spin electron in the 3d x squared minus y squared. Next is vanadium. Needs a new orbital, so let's put this similarly spin electron in the 3d x y. 
Chromium goes into the 3DYZ and then a bit different, an electron actually moves from the 4S into the 3DXY. So as manganese goes in, that actually fills in the 4S orbital. And this is the 3D subshell, with one electron in each of the five different orbitals, all with the same spin. Hopefully you've seen enough of the previous videos to know as we pick up the next five elements in the periodic table from the 3D section, period 4, and groups 3 through 12, how the rule apply. Iron, a second electron in this orbital. Hun's rule, all of the orbitals have one electron, so now we can double up. Cobalt, a second electron in this orbital, and it must have opposite spin. Nickel, a second electron in this orbital, and the Pauli exclusion principle says two electrons of opposite spin fill up that orbital. Copper, same as chromium with this electron, one also moves from the 4s to fill the d orbital. Zinc, this final electron then backfills the 4s electron. With five orbitals, we'll have 10 electrons, and this subshell, and actually the third shell, is now full. Hopefully, from this video, you now have a basic idea of how the d orbitals are shaped, and where on the periodic table the elements are filling up those orbitals, groups 3 through 12. Our next video, we will move on to the principal energy level n equals 6, and show how electrons for cesium to radon are filled. We hope to see you in that video, and if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up or a comment down below and help the channel grow by telling a friend or becoming a subscriber.